All right, Southern National in the Arca car. So settings here, you can go any steering ratio that you want. I'm using 14. I might drop it to 12 for the race, but it's just what I'm kind of comfortable with. Steering offset, I like this minus 12-ish mark. That keeps my wheel straight on the straightaways. That's all I'm really going for. Then brake bias, I'm at 70%. I can see you maybe wanting to drop it, but I don't think it matters that much. So well, I just like keeping the brake close to default at these short tracks, except for very rare occasions. So you need to get to heat in the tire, so second lap's probably gonna be the lap, but I'm just gonna try one and two uh, as if it were my hot lap. So I'm going to almost dive bomb the corner here, try to get really straight and then break under the rotation. And then I try to force the throttle a little bit early, but you can't force it too early because we need to be able to straighten out the wheel as we're getting on the throttle. It's a good lap. You can see there I slid my rears a little bit because uh, I was trying to get on the gas while my wheel was still turned. We'll go for one more lap here. Just pretend it's our second lap. Oh, I missed it. So we'll, we'll, make, we'll do a fourth lap and just pretend. Pretend this is our second lap. But one of our laps there was pretty good, but I think there's a little bit more room in it to go. So aim for the bottom, really wrap it, pick up the throttle. Straight out the wheel and go. A little bit wider entry here. Trying to really get it hooked to that bottom. Early throttle. Had to wait on the throttle a little bit. So I think the tires were worn off a little bit there. But that was the gist of it. Let's go take a look. I believe that was our second lap that ended up being our hot lap. Yep, there we go. Okay. Oh, no, sorry. It ended up being our first lap. Great. So the run-up I did here... You don't have to go right by the wall. You can just start second lane and point the car downward. It doesn't really matter because you're gonna chip out anyways. I let the car chip out once or twice when I get this type of run. And then I'm trying to make a straight line between my left front tire and the apron right here, or the line. And so I'm aiming right there, trying to make it as straight as possible. And then I add steering wheel when I get down there and then lower my brake as I add the steering wheel. So take a look at both my brake and my steering wheel. I add steering wheel and lower brake. Once the car sticks, I get half throttle, start unloading the steering wheel, and then I try to get my snap my wheel straight. So I'm really trying to make this right here as straight of a line as possible so that I can add throttle and snap my wheel back to center. Because otherwise, when you add a lot of throttle like that, you're going to spin your rears, and that's the last thing you want to do. So when you're pushing for it like you are uh, in a qualifying lap, you want to snap your wheel back to center. Same thing here, add steering wheel, lower brake, transition to half throttle, and then try to force the throttle and snap that steering wheel. See, it probably it looks a lot more drastic when I go full. So turn, 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 throttle, up and snap. And you see I still even, I lost a little bit of time there because my rear still spun because my wheel still had a little bit of angle right here. But that's kind of the games that you play when you're trying to push for speed like that. So remember, no full throttle until your steering wheel is just about straight. And then you want to make a straight line of your entry as well and use your brake and your steering wheel to hook the bottom. Don't worry about right front tire saving like we talk about on the mile and a half tracks. That's not super applicable here unless you're just overdriving every single corner that you have to just crank your wheel to make it. If you're doing any sort of reasonable early-ish braking and getting to the corner pretty naturally, then you should be okay. Uh, same idea goes for a long run. We'll work through a couple long run laps here just to kind of show you what I'm talking about. What I want to do is basically what I was doing there in the qualifying lap, except take all of that right rear sliding out of the equation. One of the biggest things about Arca and many cars at short tracks is we're trying to manage our right rear heat. Because the more that we heat up the right rear tire, the more that it's not going to have grip when we need it most. So. The wear might not be too bad, but with one slide, the heat added to it will make it so that you can't really even over rely on it. So I'm really trying to make these exits really straight. Breaking a little bit farther on the bottom, Southern National is such a wide track in comparison to some others short tracks that you can really just take this line, wrap the bottom like this, and then drive the car straight up the track and try to make the signal as wide as possible. So keep it on the bottom as long as you can, and then just full throttle, almost like 
it's all one straightaway. The other thing that you want to avoid is using too much brake in the center of the corner. Or if you brake too late, then it'll cause your right rear to slide on entry. We're just trying to do whatever we can to avoid right rear sliding. So I'm entering pretty early, keeping on the bottom for a long time, and then not going full throttle until late. That's the, that's the secret formula to being able to run consistent lap after lap at short tracks in the arcade park. It can be very hard with other cars around you. So let's say that you have another car around you and now they're, they're running the bottom one. How do we run the middle one? Well, exactly the same way as the bottom. We just have to wait a little longer because look at that, our angle isn't as good. The worst thing you can do is be in this position where you have a car below you and you try to throttle up and, and force it early and causes your right rear to spin because that's just going to snowball. We can't let other cars affect what we are doing. And you see I chose to take a lot of speed loss there because the alternative was to bang the throttle and uh, right rear slide the car around the exit. And that's just not gonna pay off in the long term. So the older your tires get, the more that right rear is gonna wanna slide. So you gotta be very disciplined to only go full throttle when you have that straight shot. If you don't have a straight shot, you should not be going full throttle. Again. The max that I'll allow you to go is maybe 60%. You just hold that 60% for the extra split second until you got that straight shot. And that's how you're going to make consistent time uh, at a short track like this. And you'll see, uh, I'm gonna just bring it in, show you the tire wear is gonna be non-existent. It's gonna be a complete non-factor, 99.99. So this tire wear tread remaining, non-factor. What does it, What is a factor is the heat. And you can see I'm managing my right rear heat temps more or less the same as the right front. And that's what we're looking for. All right, thank you all for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day. I hope to see you all on the track.